Hello, my name is Tony Hogan. I've spent my life as a professional artist. Today, I'm going to work with the amazing Derwent Inktense range in their pan selection, the studio collection, to create a piece of art that I hope you like. The view I'm going to paint for you is one quite near my studio in Wadebridge in Cornwall. It's on the Camel Estuary, looking up towards Eggersale Church with the sun rising and a little bit of mist still hanging across the river bed. These first marks are made using the Derwent water brush, like this broad one, and some of the Sherbet lemon colour. All very tentative. As the colour reduces on the brush, I can sweep in the reflective colour onto the river. Derwent Intense is a product that dries fairly rapidly and one you can work layer on layer as opposed to watercolours where they'll blend together. This I can layer on top of. So I then take some of the sun yellow, the stronger yellow, and strengthen the top edge of these yellow areas. Moving forward, I'm going to develop the whole of the sky area, which will all be done with the same broad Derwent brush, pen brush, but I will be using a range of colours, including mango, bright orange, cherry, fuchsia, uh, mid-ultramarine, and the violet. Balancing the work, it's important to, at this point, add some of the sky colour into the Camel River. Once you start to bring in some of the really darker tones for the church, tower, and the headland, etc., you will see the dramatic change in the work. Working with the navy blue, I almost draw a line across here, then, making sure there's plenty of water on the brush, I lift back, fade it down here to where it's going to be misty. With racing green, I find the line of the river bank, then, adding some of the dark plum, I work into this while still wet and drag it down to start to create the reflections into the water. Moving along, I change to a, a medium sized brush and using Payne's Grey, drawn in the rough shape of these bushes under which using the uh, same green I have dropped some in here. A flash of light from this morning sky catches here. Let's put that in now. To do that, I've used the hooker's green and a touch of the sherbet lemon. Now we need to take that and let's bring some of that into the river. Just a slight reflection. As I start to work on this lower area, Note how by using the Payne's Grey with different strengths of water application it gives me a deeper tone here to here creating recession even though we're talking the same colour. Still working around this area there's quite a lot of work and a lot of colours going in but note how I brought some warm tones in. This was actually the uh, dark plum colour used very pale, a lot of water to reduce it and now I'm going to keep developing all this side with greens and warm tones and dark shadow areas. The area <coughs> that needs addressing now is obviously the mist rising. Now I have two options for this. I could either get some sandpaper and sand some of this off or by using 
the ink tents white and the big brush start effectively stippling. This can take quite a while building this up slowly a little bit at a time. When using this technique you will find that the first marks may not stand out very well particularly on the lighter areas so what you have to do is to put some stipple some on and then as that dries return to the area to achieve the required effect as we get to the end of this work the most important thing now is to balance up the tonal values so let's strengthen around here allowing the mist behind to look stronger more defined strengthen up here around the edge of here darken it a little bit more increase the values here add a little bit of red in here some nice warm red ochre in here to bring this forward giving more depth to the work all these little touches whatever you see add value to your work